Spring 2022 anime season is underway, but with the start of a new season comes the end of the previous one. So yo guys, it's Slyro, you already know that today I'm going to be talking about the anime that I watched in the winter 2022 season and ranking them from worst to best. I want to bring a video like this once per anime season just to keep my thoughts updated on the currently airing anime and just to let everybody know what I've been watching, what my current thoughts are, and how that changes throughout the year, if it changes throughout the year. Also forcing myself to make a video like this keeps me up to date with anime and keeps me from pushing it off to the side and falling behind, which I am so prone to do. This list is only going to be the anime that I've seen. I'm not one of those people that watches like 50 anime every season. Uh, I think there are 8 that I'm going to be talking about today. And they include anime that just aired some sort of episodes during the winter season. Not all of them started in the winter. Um, some of them are holdovers from the previous season. Some of them aren't even finished yet. But um, if they aired a couple episodes in the winter season, they are a fair game to be talked about. Let me know your thoughts on these anime, anything that you watched that I didn't. And let's go ahead and just jump into the list. So generally, I'm not one to drop a lot of anime, but unfortunately there was two anime that I dropped this year. So they're technically going to be 8 and 7, and I'm only going to rank them by how many episodes I made it through. That doesn't really reflect the quality of the shows, and I will uh, talk about that as I get into it. So let's start out with uh, Sabuku Ibisco. I feel like this is probably an anime that has a lot of fans out there, probably one of those that will become like a cult classic that like certain um, groups of people will like. But I made it an episode and a half through, and halfway through the second episode, I just, I couldn't tell you the name of a single character, I couldn't tell you the motivation of a single character, I couldn't really get a grip as to anything that was going on, I didn't know what the story was trying to tell me, and there was nothing for me to latch onto. Um, the visuals looked nice, and I'm sure as it went on, sort of the, the wacky and crazy world that inhabited it um, starts to make more sense. But the anime didn't really do a good job to connect me to the story. There wasn't a character I was rooting for. There wasn't... I, I didn't really know what was happening. Um, so I, I dropped it, and I haven't heard any, like, a anything to overwhelmingly change that opinion. Um, the main praise that I think I've heard about this anime is just how crazy and off the walls it is. Uh, which is great, but there needs to be something to attract me to it, and it just didn't. So I just dropped it after an episode and a half. Um, sorry to any fans of that anime. Um... And I'm less sorry to fans of Tribe 9. Uh, <laughs> that's the other one I dropped. I made it eight episodes. I tried. I tried so hard. I got so close to the end, um, but I couldn't do it. Um, Tribe 9 is a extreme baseball anime, uh, where extreme baseball is just like a made-up sport that's like based on baseball but has its own rules. And the first few episodes were pretty cool. It's made by the same uh, creator as Danganronpa, so like I was basically obligated to at least watch it. The character designs are off the wall, but I think I really just couldn't do it after they introduced a character named Yasuhiro and if I can find a picture of this dude I'll, I'll show him on the screen um oh my gosh he was possibly the ugliest anime character I've ever seen there is like a, a line where you have your anime designs and and this just went way over it uh not to mention that the the show just got kind of boring and I stopped caring about the main team um there was a character that got a lot of focus early on um that then didn't get a focus and then you kind of shifted to like the the two main protagonists uh, i'm not really sure who's supposed to be the real protagonist but one of them was really really annoying uh the red hair guy uh i forget his name but he was kind of annoying um most of the characters were kind of annoying uh the enemy teams were kind of annoying they went through this whole thing of like disbanding the team just to not actually have to disband um there was like this overall like villain group at the beginning that like didn't really show up again and there was a whole bunch of other things happening I don't know, like, it had some interesting ideas, but, like, I I stopped caring uh, a few episodes through, probably around episode 5 or 6. I tried to power through a couple more, and it just kept getting worse, so I couldn't finish this anime. I'm so sorry. Um, except for not really. I just, I don't think this anime is that great. I think it has some fun stuff to it, but, uh, was not for me. Alright, so now we can move on to the anime that I actually consider, like, rankable and finished. Um, with the first one actually not finished. Uh, at number 6 is Salaryman's Club, uh, or Ryman's Club, I believe on Crunchyroll it's just labeled a Salaryman's Club. Um, it is. It started airing like halfway through the anime season, so as a result I've seen 6 episodes to this point, I think episode 7, maybe even episode 8 are out by now. Um, but the anime is not finished airing, it is a sports anime that combines working at like this business company and playing badminton. And at the first couple episodes I didn't really get why um, there was like... It seemed to be just like a high school sports anime 
that for some reason had to center at like a company. I didn't really get the um, balance of working at a company and being on like a badminton club, especially then like they went to like this tournament and then there was like an interview on a TV with like the second best badminton player in the country. But that player also just like works for this business company, like a rival business company. And I didn't really get it. It seemed like they were just sort of replacing high school for company. But as it went on, um, and the most recent episodes have really centered around the actual like business part and how that sort of relates to, to badminton. Badminton's actually taken a little bit of a backseat over the last episode or two. And I actually kind of like that. The badminton's good. And I like the main character. Uh, he's sort of, he's one of those, he got a, he had like this tragic thing happen in his past that he's not able to like, uh, jump when, uh, like, the, the birdies, like, come into him or whatever, um, so that's, like, a thing that he's got to work through because of something that happened, um, th you know, he's got all these lovable characters around him working at the company, and I do think that there is a fresh air around this anime because it is, uh, centered around adults and not just, like, high schoolers, and there is, like, a different energy when you have, um, adults as being the characters that are centered around, um, I think it's really neat, and I definitely plan on finishing it, so I will probably give my updated thoughts at the end of the spring anime season, because half the episodes are going to air in the spring anime season, so it's going to count for that as well. But uh, yeah, that one uh, is number six for now, but it's definitely a pretty good anime. If you like sports anime, uh, it's good. If you don't like sports anime, I don't know that this offers anything too crazy that would get you to watch this over any other sports anime, um, but I'm a sucker for sports anime, so I enjoy it coming in at number five and thankfully i'm not that big of a youtuber where you need to care about my opinion um but my number five is demon slayer season two um yeah people love this love 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 demon slayer and especially this season and i think it's mostly just because of the animation the animation is great it deserves all the praise it gets i get that the characters for me have fallen a little flat and i don't find myself super invested in any new character that i learned about um the characters that i liked season one i actually enjoyed zenitsu but like he hasn't really gone anywhere or done anything in fact i think he's probably become worse and a lot of the zenitsu hate that uh people were getting um or that people were saying like early on i i'm starting to kind of come around and i at least understand um inosuke is fine but like has just been the same all the characters are just static they don't really change um, my other sort of issues are that the show just doesn't really have any like set of rules like season one you know, there are rules about how demons operate and how, you know, how you have to kill them and things like that. And then this season, demons like, oh, well, we don't actually work like that. Um, there's also just like a bit of a power scaling issue where it's just like, it seems like they went from like learning how to like be a demon slayer to like immediately fighting like upper top tier, um, like upper six like demons and stuff like that. It's just kind of crazy. Also, the pacing is just kind of weird. Um, Tanjiro just like learns this special move off screen apparently i don't really remember him going through a thing to like learn it um but then very early on he was just like oh i learned how to do this thing but i can only do it once and then i run out of energy then he definitely uses it more than once runs out of energy stays on the ground for like 30 seconds breathes a little bit and then he's like perfectly fine um there's just like no tension um which is weird after like what happened in mugen train because i really enjoyed mugen train that was like action for the sake of action um, and there like was tension and it gave you reason to believe that there'd be tension moving forward And I just feel like there wasn't really any for this season um, I think there were some emotional beats that were pretty good. This is still a pretty good anime People are gonna hype this up as like anime of the year contender I, j I just don't see it. I think the characters are a little static and I think it's fine I'm probably gonna keep watching Demon Slayer because surely more is gonna come out in the future And I want to keep up with like the most popular anime that's happening but it doesn't hit me the same way as some other anime this season did. And uh, that's just kind of my thoughts. The animation is fantastic. Music, fantastic. The opening is a banger. Um, you know, there's a lot of good stuff. The, the character design's great. But uh, I just don't find myself as drawn to these characters as some other things. And I'm one that I very, very much need a character to um, latch on to and relate to. So that is where I stand on Demon Slayer Season 2 right now. Please don't hate me. I'm sorry. If it's like your favorite thing in the world, um, that's perfectly fine, respectable. Um, it's just not mine. I like some other things. Such as My Dress Up Darling. This show is a lot of fun. It's really cool. It's really cute. Um, it has probably the best girl of the year with uh, Kitagawa. And Gojo, the main protagonist, is also really cool as well. He wants to uh, like make or uh, paint like Hina dolls, which is like not generally something that's like super manly, I guess. And so like... 
he's sort of had to like deal with that his whole life with people judging him for like this like weird passion he has um and then he meets uh, Kitagawa who also has like she's like super popular super pretty has like a lot of friends but she also has like this you know quote unquote weird passion for like cosplaying um and she's also just like really nice and like empathetic and like doesn't judge other people doesn't judge uh, Gojo and then Gojo like starts making uh cosplay outfits and like from there their chemistry is just really really good some of the side characters that get introduced uh, a little later on I was less of a fan of but the main two duo really really just like carry the show uh their chemistry is just fantastic the humor is really good uh there's a lot of like fan service and etchy and stuff which like generally I'm not the biggest fan of but I feel like they did it pretty well um and they started it pretty early so like you knew what you're getting yourself into so like you know, with some of the stuff that's a little crazier, like, later on in the anime, like, if you're still watching this episode, like, 8 or 9, it's just, like, you knew what you were getting into uh, by that point, so I think this is really good, I think it's very fun, it's very wholesome, despite being, a, you know, a little, like, you know, edgy and stuff here and there, but, like, I don't know, I just had a good time with this, and it's a, it's a really good anime, and this is another one where the opening was really, really good, uh, however, this was not the pair that I was the most invested in this season, because that honor goes to Sasaki and Miyano. I love this anime by the end. Um, it took a little bit to get going. I'm not one that is super well versed in BL anime. I have not seen like a whole bunch of like uh, BL anime or anything like that. And this anime uses a lot of like terms and stuff that I didn't know that I had to Google to be like, what is semi? What is uke? Why do they keep making references to what these things are? Uh, but the main character is like super into BL manga, uh, but you know, hasn't really confronted those feelings about if he's actually attracted to dudes, uh, things like that. So, but then, you know, he meets somebody who's, like, super coming on to him, and the whole anime just ended up being, like, really cute, and there is definitely a sense of relatability to, uh, Miyano specifically, as he sort of questions, like, what it means to really like somebody. Um, do I like somebody that likes me just out of, um, obligation because they like me? Like, why do they like me? Is it because I look, have, like, a feminine face? Is it this? Is it that? There's so many, like, things that he has to do to sort of overcome like any sort of uh self-doubt and things that he just doesn't have like the highest opinion of himself about and uh it's just really sweet by the end uh Sasaki is also just really really fantastic I think there is a little bit to him that I'm like mm, he's like a little clingy and like over jealous sometimes but you know hopefully if there's more uh of this show which I think there's supposed to be something more of the show in the future you know hopefully that doesn't become an issue because I think they're fantastic together. I think they're great. And uh, I think this was fantastic, uh, a really good anime, and I really enjoyed it so, so much. The second best anime that I watched this season was Ranking of Kings. Uh, this does refer to only the second half of Ranking of Kings because the first core actually aired at the end of last season and it was getting a whole bunch of hype that uh, it was nominated for some of the Crunchyroll Awards uh, for good reason. And the second half of Ranking of Kings basically just kept up that same level of quality. Boji is one of the best protagonists of all time. Uh, he's fantastic, but also just like all the characters are super interesting. Um, Ranking of Kings is a great fantasy anime, and I'm not even one that generally likes fantasy anime that much. I think sometimes it can be a little um, boring and predictable, but they did a really, really good job with this, and all the characters are likable between Boji and Kage, and then you have characters that you are interested to learn more about, like Boss and Muranjo, and there was just never a dull moment in this show. If I had to have one minor complaint, it's that um, being a fantasy anime that has a character that has healing capabilities, it sort of lessened the impact be when they kept going back to like, oh, this character like died, but then they're able to bring him back, or this character is almost going to die, but then they're able to be healed. Um, so it sort of lost a little bit of tension going throughout it after they did that for like the sixth time. It's just like, okay, this character is like perfectly fine um, because it doesn't make sense for them to die here. Uh, that doesn't mean that nobody dies, uh, or that nobody is taken out of the story in some way or capacity, or is changed in some way or capacity. That does still happen. Uh, there's just a couple of moments where I'm just like, mm, the tension of this moment is ripped out because they've already tried to pull this on me, and it doesn't work. Uh, but besides that, I mean, it's really fantastic. This is another one, the opening is so, so good. I'm, dude, when it comes to, like, best opening, when it comes to the end of the year, I'm going to have a hard time trying to find my favorite opening, because there's a lot of fantastic ones. Um, but that's not a current me problem, that's a future me problem. Rank of Kings, you've probably heard a million people gush about it by now. If you haven't watched it, you absolutely should. Um, and, uh, you'll know within the first couple episodes if it's something that you would like or not, because after the first couple episodes, it just stays that level of quality, if not gets better. It's really good, and it's all fantastic. Uh, I don't know if there's more in the future or not, but, um, 
yeah, it's it ended off at a good spot where it could end here and we would never see it again. I'd be satisfied or it could keep going for 100 more episodes and I'd also be satisfied. So either or, we'll see if there's any more Ranking of Kings in the future. But it's the second best anime for this season because of course the best anime of the season is Attack on Titan Final Season Part 2, um, which is not the end. This is not the final season at all because now there's going to be a final season Part 3, which that annoys me beyond all uh, whatever, but... This shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody that knows how much I really enjoyed Attack on Titan. It's my second favorite anime of all time, and uh, I read the manga before watching the season, and uh, it was really good to just see everything animated, to put all the pieces together. This season had a lot of moving parts and um, a lot of different people from both sides coming together for various goals, and seeing it all come together uh, was just really, really good. There was a lot of fantastic moments. I don't really want to spoil anything. If you haven't, if you're behind a couple episodes or anything like that, you absolutely need to be watching Attack on Titan. It is fantastic. It is a masterpiece, and it is a classic for years to come. Um, unfortunately, we are going to have to wait another year for it to finish off, um, which is a little sad. I'm interested to see how the anime onlys uh, react to the ending. So. We'll see how that goes, but at least I have a whole other year to sort of finalize my thoughts on the ending. But yeah, there's not really anything that I could say that hasn't already been said about Attack on Titan. Final Season Part 2 lives up to every other season of Attack on Titan, especially Final Season Part 1. This one is right up there, and Final Season Part 1, I, I, I think, did that end up winning Anime of the Year last year? I don't know. Um, I will say, despite the fact that this is my favorite anime of the season, and it could maybe be my favorite anime of the year, um... This is not going to get my vote for Anime of the Year. I, I'm I'm just so annoyed that Attack on Titan can just, like, split its final season into three parts and then just be the best anime and win Anime of the Year for three years in a row. That doesn't sound right. Um, so I, that's why I think that there should be a separate category for sequels and new anime. Um, but until they do that, I am going to keep looking for the best new anime to vote for for this year. But again, that's an end-of-the-year problem, not a current uh, time problem. But I'm just throwing that out there that it, that is, you know, a little annoying that uh, I, I feel like this season is going to get a huge chunk of praise. And uh, if it ends up winning Anime of the Year after the first part one Anime of the Year last year, that's a little annoying and a little unfair to all the other anime that exists. Because, you know, Attack on Titan has been running for a while and has had the time to garner like a lot of fans. So obviously it's going to stay popular um, until maybe part three. We'll see. Uh <laughs> But yeah, I'm going to stop rambling, so that is the 8 anime that I either watched or attempt to watch or am still watching from the winter 2022 anime season. I will do a video similar like this at the end of the spring anime season. If you want to know what I'm watching, I already did a video on that, I'll leave a link to that. And uh, yeah, let me know on what your thoughts of the stuff that I watched, anything that I missed out on that maybe I should watch, um, you know. Use the comments to uh, to try and convince me or just let me know any sort of thoughts. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will uh, see you all around. So thanks for watching and until the next time, peace out.